It's me. Uh, so, I've been arrested on a warrant. Yeah, so I heard Heather call me. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer presence, you will still have the right to stop answering any time. You also have the right to stop answering any time until you talk to a lawyer. Do you understand all those? Yes. Welcome back. You're about to see former captain of the Port Orange Police Department, Kimberly Kilpatrick, be interrogated for a crime that she allegedly committed and was arrested for. Due to this incident, she and now the city of Port Orange are involved in a $1.2 million lawsuit that appears to be headed to federal court due to the statements inside of the claims that she acted under the color of law and in her official capacity. When what you would call good officers named Gregory Cook and Justin White came forward about this incident, they were sent cease and desist. In relating to this incident and a newspaper article, this is what the mayor, the city manager, and the police chief had to say. Let me give you a heads up. The city manager's on the right, the police chief's coming up to the podium. Those two have since resigned. Colorful uh, to describe the story that was in the paper uh, Saturday because it seemed uh, incomplete. Yes, sir, I, I believe you're speaking about the Friday uh, web and the And that Sunday, article they're speaking of was pretty uh, straightforward. It indicated department. didn't alter any forms or documents. However, what she did do is take money out of the account that was set up for a disabled adult that was injured in a motorcycle accident. She used that money to close on a house and pay off a loan that had a 26% interest rate. Let me remind you here, this is a captain of a police department. She makes around ninety dollars to $100,000 a year, according to this website that tracks government salaries. Um, I, I'll, I'll invite Chief Grimaldi to the, uh, to the podium. I, it's it's uh, just a wrapped up investigation. If I speak, I'll probably say something wrong. I'm happy to report tonight to you that the FDLE investigation into the allegation involving Captain Kim Kilpatrick has concluded and no evidence was produced to support the allegation. I'm sad to say that the allegation appears to be nothing more than a product of internal rumor mongering filed by one of our own officers. Based on the investigative summary, a patrol officer within our department who initially requested an investigation by the Florida Attorney General's office was brought forward or brought forward a criminal investigation based entirely on hearsay. In an abundance of caution, the investigation was immediately turned over to the FDLE, who traced back the rumor to its origins and found that it was all smoke and no fire. They say no good deed goes unpunished. Well, that's certainly the case here. In a sworn statement, the daughter of a former detective recalled the series of events following her father's motorcycle accident when Captain Kilpatrick, her father's liaison with the Port Orange Police Department, was called upon to assist with locating the necessary forms to obtain a power of attorney and update beneficiary information, and she did just that. Now here we are more than two years after the accident, investigating an officer who did nothing more than assist a family of an injured colleague in a time of need. I'm sure you've seen the email sent by Bob Walker over the weekend questioning why Captain Kilpatrick was still working while under investigation. The answer is simple. There was what not one iota of evidence presented to support the allegation that was being presented. In this country, you are still innocent until proven guilty, and that doesn't change just because you're a police officer. But it surely seems that when you're a police officer, things are looked the other way. Because although there was an investigation, there was no mention of $25,000 taken out of this account. Now, I believe there was some span of time between when it was taken out and when it was repaid, sometime around when there was notice of an investigation. However, if you don't do an investigation and you only take the word of the criminals, then everybody's innocent. I'll explain everything to you here as soon as she's ready. She may not shut the door. Is she FDLE as well? No, she's from Daytona Beach. Beach. He said, do that. We'll go through all this first. And then I'll obviously explain everything. You're definitely in custody, so we have to read your Miranda warning and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And we'll get to it, okay? Yep. Yeah. Special Agent Chris Shepard with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, currently at the Flagler Beach Police Department. Also with me is Daytona Beach Detective Mary Toledo. Um, and with us is uh, Kimberly Kilpatrick, um, which I'm going to go ahead and. Um, read you your Miranda warnings here. Um, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions. 
and have him or her with you during that questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed to you before any questionings if you wish. If you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you will still have the right to stop answering any time. You also have the right to stop answering any time until you talk to a lawyer. Do you understand all those? Yes. All right. With that in mind, are you willing to talk to us at this point in time? Um, Although I'd like to see this woman in jail, I do not recommend talking to law enforcement without an attorney present. First, I'll I'll start this off with, um, do you have any idea what this is about? Yes. What what, what do you think this is about? Um, Uh, It's about the continued uh, involvement with David Fouts and his family. Um, The money that I had paid to Good Samaritan because I had borrowed money from Alexa Fouts. So it's more of the witch hunt from Gregory Cook and Carly White. Okay. What money are you talking about? Uh, there was some money that I had borrowed from Alexa back in, it was the end of 2016, um, in January of 17. Uh, I was purchasing a home in Daytona, and I was on an account with her where we were depositing money from funds collected for her family after Dave's crash. Mm -hmm. Um, And I get, you know, it looks bad on the surface, but uh, I had borrowed the money to pay. There was a creditor thing I had to pay for the loan on the house, and then I did... um, there was a check separate incident for the title company because the sale of my house was messed up because the people buying my house at the time, the money from the title company didn't push it through or collect it. There was no money at the time and I had also the closing on the on the new house the same day. And because the funds weren't in there, I contacted Alexa, told her what was happening and Joe Sweats at the time was with me. Uh, he took a check to the bank to get the certified check. And who's Joe Swift? Joe Sweats. Uh, we were dating at the time, and he was with me there. Oh, okay. Joe Sweats is so, another police officer who was terminated from his position from the Port Orange Police Department. And so Joe Sweats went with you to, to do what again? He was with me closing on the houses, doing okay. the closings. Um, and he, I gave him the check because I had to stay to finish paperwork at the first closing. Just so we're clear, which yeah. check? Uh, it was just one that I, uh, sent. He went with the bank to get, it was, um, I would say it was for around 7000 somewhere in there. Mm-hmm. I don't okay. remember the exact amount, like, but, and that was to the title company. Okay, you can't... Well, I'm pretty sure you can't, like, title companies don't take personal checks, right? Right. He right. had to go to SunTrust and get the certified check. He went to the bank and did that for me. Okay. So, back at SunTrust? Yeah. Okay. I was with the title company still. Okay. And that was in? That was January 2017. Uh If you look in the left-hand corner, this interrogation took place on 5-4 of 2022. Pay that, and the deal was I was going to pay into, uh, let's see, 16. I was paying it back after the sale of the house, but, and then he went into Good Samaritan. Dave went to Good Samaritan. For reference, Good Samaritan is a rehabilitation facility. Maybe 10, 11 checks out of there? No, I didn't. Yeah, they're all, they all have your signature on it. And they were all, the majority of them were for Dave. You, you paid off a, uh, okay. you see what I'm saying? Like a the, cre- there was a crema- cremation yep, service. Yeah, for $20 or something. There was um, something from Iron Horse Motorcycles. You wrote a check to them. I don't remember. I don't it might have been those. for a raffle. So the majority of the stuff from the benefit account was for Dave. Okay. But Alexa didn't seem to have any, she, she had no workings with that account. It seems like yeah, her name was on it, but it seems like you pretty much handled that entire account, just no. from just from the paperwork. No, because she had the she had the debit card and stuff. She was she used the debit card for things, and she didn't write a lot of checks. I know, but I didn't think there were that many checks even written. 
going through this at the time you're working at the Port Orange Police mm-hmm. Department, right? Yes. Um, there's a lot of money coming in. Who would you make aware at any point in time that there was some sort of deal going on with the, the family? Like deal. You, you like you made, you said you're borrowing money, right? You're getting a loan that's based out of this account that was set up for David to um, medical bills. Obviously, he's got a ton of medical bills coming mm-hmm. in. I mean, mm-hmm. he was hurt pretty bad. He well, was behind on payments, and mm-hmm. I actually went to Bank of America. Um, they wouldn't give us much information, but I had paid. I want to say a thousand dollars towards the payments. Towards his in, house. Towards his house in the beginning. That from, we had, what, from which account? From the same account. So there's a check written to Bank of America for a thousand dollars, is what you're saying? I don't think it was a check. I think it was a card. So. We How did, much was he behind? Do you remember? I honestly don't remember. I know he was behind at least two months worth. I want to say. Okay. Okay. So, so around three thousand. Three to four grand. So yes. So, and this was in the beginning when the account first opened. So I put the thousand at the mortgage company or the bank, um, and then with him being in the hospital and then having the, because he was going back and forth. It was like you guys thought he was going to die, right? Well, at one point, yeah. yeah. And then he would have surgery, and then he'd come out of it, and he'd be like better than he was. Um, Kim, let me ask you a question. All right, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be an yeah. asshole, nothing. I just want to be up front with you. Mm-hmm. You borrowed money out of a benefit account. How do you think that looks? I know. You know I, I, mean? I know. That's, I know. I know how that looks, and I get that. I'm not. Yeah, and that's, that's the I, I don't dispute that. I'm saying that, so what do you think, again, ballpark, Total did money did you borrow? It was at I'd say twenty four. Thousand. Mm-hmm. And we're talking he's three to four thousand. What is it? Is it how it starts to get so insane? Is it, so that's what we're saying. Is that's why? How does this look on the surface? Is right. you're borrowing money, meanwhile bills are going unpaid. No, that's inaccurate. Well, Alexa writes in a letter to the court that mm-hmm. she could not save the house because she didn't have the money. Right. And according to documents, the house went into foreclosure and it was ultimately lost. In addition to these records, at 319 Perfect Circle, a house that's registered to Kilpatrick, during this time, a swimming pool was installed, including a wrought iron fence, a total value of around $50,000. Is there any documentation, because you were obviously the captain in Port Orange when all this stuff was going on, is there any documentation from work, um, emails, messages, because I... Correct me if I'm wrong, but Port Orange gives you a work phone, right? Yes. Anything that can back up anything that you're saying as far as loans or money transactions or anything like that? No, because I didn't use my work phone that much. Well, here's where it gets even better. As she announced her retirement, she deleted all the data from her cell phone and her work computer, including the records of her allegedly contacting the victim while she's under investigation, according to records, on the complaint and her cell phone logs. Two charges that you're looking at, as I believe I told you, but grand theft mm-hmm. and the exploitation. Why didn't somebody <laughs> just call me and ask me and I would have presented well, it? Kim, we did an investigation three, four years ago. And it never came up like this kind of stuff. Like this is the kind of stuff that is you're trying to develop, and this is where you got to understand. Coming from my position, mm-hmm. and you kept that, Phil. You kept that close to your just, heart. Yeah. yeah. There's there's this thing where the people are screaming that you're doing something shady, yeah. right? And I don't want to get into all the drama of it because honestly, all I care about is what the facts are. The facts mm-hmm. are what it shows. And talking to everybody else, there was no. We've never heard the word loan um these these this these twenty four thousand dollars this loan and people are coming to you from the pd's angle fdle's coming to you all this stuff and not once is this the first time we've heard about any of this and so you see coming from a from a transparency point you're talking about funds that are being donations that people are going in there because 
you know dave is jacked up in the hospital and people are thinking he's going to die and then you know there's they house payments to be paid they donated there's that this, money this, for him yeah and then there's a, a loan so i mean you understand where we're coming from i do i do um it's just and that's why we're saying is there any documentation whatsoever that you can show us at any point in time that this was a loan I can't. Well, because as, as this has been going on since 2016, there's been so much... Geez, there's much turmoil everywhere. The turmoil over there, but then there's a little smoke here, then there's a little smoke here. And people are going back and forth, and it's coming from all angles. And, and then all go, of a sudden we find that. You know, we yeah, find you're, you're, not, you're not talking about a small amount of money. Like, no. you were a captain at the yeah. police department. I know. If you guys were having a picnic, and you went and used money from the police department, would you not have to bring receipts back? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why did saying? Carmen come off of the checking account? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. She was on it, and then she came off of it. Well, it depends who you ask. I'm asking you. I know, but I'm just saying she she came to me and said that it was just too much going on. She was too stressed. She didn't have time for this because she was doing her victim advocate stuff, and she just didn't didn't want to, you know, have to be involved. So I said, because okay. in her FDLE interview, back, the original one, yeah, the yeah. original oh, one, yeah. mm -hmm. I think she said something about she thought there was some shady stuff going on, <laughs> and I didn't know. I was right. like, nobody asked. Well, what, what, what did you see that you thought was shady? The so, shady stuff is what they're referring to when they try to say that we fraudulently signed Dave's name on the insurance policy. Okay. That they still have yet to not get any of that correct. The ex the exploitation statute is broad. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's. It's depriving somebody permanently or temporarily. Mm -hmm. So, um, plus on top of everything else, I mean, there's not that, you know, you were, you're, you're acting in your official capacity as the captain. You're, you know, those kids, you said in your interview, you did everything you did for those kids. And I believe you. You know, they were young. They don't know what they're doing. They got $250,000 coming in this direction, $48,000 coming from this direction, and then all this money coming in from the community. They have attorneys that have stepped into this thing. If you went to the attorneys and said, hey, can you write me up a little legal thing, payment schedule, because mm -hmm. I'm about to borrow $24,000 from the benefit account, what do you think the attorneys would have said? Like, what would have legally guided them at that point? Yeah, I don't know what they would have said, but... I mean, do you think they would have said it was a good idea? Like, you know what I mean? That's what I'm saying is that when you come into the, the is it wasn't done and they're there. And again, that's why we're sitting here is because there is is there is some deceitfulness that was, like it or not, like nobody else was made aware of this. Nobody was made aware of this. Outside of Alexa and I, no. That's, well, if it's a consul, I mean, I paid the money and I paid interest on that money that I paid back. So I mean, you did what? You don't even I keep a log on how much money you took out and like put in, it. and now you've paid interest on the money you paid back. Right, but it is no way still going it. back into the world that all three of us live in. Too is there's always two as things are starting to heat up. One of the best things that you can do, which would be to go to the supervisor and say, "Listen, this is what happened." This is the deal we made, and none of that was ever done either. Yeah, is there anybody like Proctor was there, the chief, there, the chief and, anybody aware of any of that? Any yeah. of the lieutenants, captains? No, because... This is probably the chief. This is probably what they're screaming about is I, they did give me a loan. Well, no. Uh, it, yeah, I know. You know but, they, but they're screaming, and that's part of the... I use that just as a, I'm not no, I know, but screaming. I'm just saying it's part of the reason I kept it maybe close to heart because... They were attacking everything anyhow. If I dated something wrong, they're attacking it. And they were implicating the chief on that or the whoever. And it was just the chief ended up leaving. The city manager ends up leaving. I end up leaving because they're just, you can't even turn left without them saying, okay, you turned too sharp. You know, and there's a Now, full disclosure about this department, it does in fact have an issue with defrauding people. One of their former sergeants was arrested for defrauding his own family. And that would be Stephen Braddock, a former sergeant and detective with the Port Orange Police Department who ultimately lost his retirement for being convicted of exploitation of an elderly person. For like a month or two, 
Like, it, I don't even know how I would do that, but... Either do I. But... But through subpoenas and investigative the means, lo and behold, there's these two transactions. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, I agree. And, you know, like I said, I kept it to myself. And Let me ask you this. Yeah. As the investigation goes on, because obviously, you know, it's not going to stop here. Um, there's more stuff to do. Is there anything else that we're going to come across? Not at all. Well, this whole interrogation was about an hour and a half long. I'll put a link in the description so you can watch the full video, but I am going to let you in on some very saddening news. It appears the thin blue line has protected this one once again. There was a plea deal made, and this person received no jail time, has not been convicted of any felony, however, had to pay back restitution in the thousands of dollars to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement for their investigation, $9,755.56 to be exact and a mere $192.48 to the victim in which she took the money as a loan. I put a link down in the description to Volusia Exposed where you can see every one of these documents. Please check it out. One last point I do want to cover. She was in charge of investigations. And if you look at this form, one of the lines indicates, after an investigation of the offense and your background, it appears that in the interest of the state of Florida and your own will be best served by the following procedure pre-trial intervention. Could you imagine convicting a captain of a police department of felonies that was in charge of investigations? How many cases would come under fire? I want to thank you guys for watching, like, and subscribing. This is Captain Kilpatrick, a former police officer and administrator with the Port Orange Police Department. I've got a new website launched. It's called JMA Merch. You can visit it at jmamerch.com. I'll keep you updated on the federal case and find out what happens with that one. I'll see you guys soon.